If you're interested in reloading for the ARC cartridges, 22 ARC, 6mm ARC, or 338 ARC, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to talk about the cartridges. We'll talk about reloading equipment and components that you're going to need and go deep on the different performance potentials, powder selections, bullet grain weights, and more. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. We've had a ton of fun with the ARC cartridges. We've done bolt action builds in 22 ARC and 6 ARC. We've had absolutely outstanding results long range with those cartridges, both in the AR platform and in the bolt action platform. Impact 338 ARC, which is new this year, brings subsonic performance to a new level and takes things in an entirely different direction, but also the cartridge optimized for the AR platform. What I wanna do is I wanna start with these cartridges and talk through the high level talking points for each of them in the chronological order that they were introduced. So starting with the six arc, optimized for AR15, 2.260 inch cartridge overall length, long range and defense. Introduced in 2020 by Hornady. Pretty popular really from the beginning because it, it really takes that formula that we had with 6.5 Grendel and just extends it a bit with lighter recoil and longer higher BC bullet potential and just a really great overall optimized platform for the AR-15. Definitely not heavy recoiling, but it, compared to something like a 55 grain 223 or 556, it takes that hard hitting potential and those longer, higher BC bullet potentials way up. Parent case, 6.5 Grendel. So it's got the 7.62 by 39 case rim. It's gonna be something that you're gonna have if you are set up to load for 7.62 by 39. Uh, optimal bullets for the six arc are gonna be in that kind of 103 to 108 grain range. But as you'll see when we get into the data, the bullet weight range is actually wider than that. Okay, then along came the 22 arc, uh, also optimized for the AR-15. Again, 2.260 inches. That's going to be a common theme along all three. Uh, long range hunting and varmiting. Uh, the varmiting aspect is definitely where this takes a little bit of a twist and a turn. Also lighter recoiling. So higher velocities. If you're going to use something like Hornady's new ELDVT bullets, you're going to get really explosive potential on those gophers or rock chucks or coyotes, you know, that class of varmiting. The 22 arc came along in 2024, so it's now over a year old. Again, the parent case, the same as the six arc, 6.5 six Grendel. Optimal bullets for the 22 arc are gonna fall somewhere in that 62 to 88 grain range. Okay, then we step up, and I mean up in bullet weight range to the 338 arc. Also optimized for the AR-15, introduced this year, 2025, by Hornady. Uh, again, the parent case is 6.5 Grendel. This time, optimal bullet weight range is gonna be in that 175 for supersonic up to 307 for subsonic range. And this is where this cartridge is really more similar to 300 Blackout than uh, it is to the 22 arc and the six arc. It's really optimized for those heavier bullets harder hitting subsonic scenarios with more energy uh, compared to the 22 arc and the six millimeter arc, but it just happens to share that same parent case. So this video is about reloading for the arcs. So what exactly are you gonna need? First off, it's gonna be pretty much like all other bottleneck rifle cartridges, but you do only need 2.260 inches capacity for your press. Single stage, turret or progressive, it really depends on what you're doing. If you're loading high volume subsonic rounds for your 338 arc, you're gonna probably wanna go with the progressive. If you're loading really ultra precision oriented 22 arc or six arc for extreme long range shooting, like some of the stuff that we do here, you might wanna to go to a single stage and even weigh out your powder charges separately on a powder dispenser with an ultra sensitive scale, right? One of those really high resolution scales. Uh, the dies are gonna be unique per caliber. And for these cartridges, like a lot of the other AR cartridges that you'll be loading or semi-auto cartridges in general, you're gonna probably want the option to have a crimp die that's gonna help with your feeding. And if you're using cannulared bullets, 
you can use that as a guide and that provides a nice capability for the crimp. You're gonna have the same shell holder across the board for uh, all of these or shell plate. For an example, if you're using RCBS equipment, that would be a number 32 shell plate for a progressive press and it would be a number 32 shell holder for a single stage or a turret. Just note that top heavy cartridges like the 300 Blackout and the 338 Arc are going to struggle or need special setup if you're using a bullet feeder because the center of gravity is so high on the cartridge. The bullets don't want to flip. They don't want to stay on the cartridge as the shell plate is being indexed, those sorts of things. So you might need to do a little bit of fine tuning there. Also, if you're loading for the AR platform or another semi-auto platform, I highly suggest that you load some test rounds you shoot them over the chronograph, and you confirm that your semi-auto rifle is going to cycle completely and that you have reliable feeding. Okay, so one of the first things that you're gonna to need to look at when you go to reload for the arcs is what powders am I gonna use? And that's really a combined question. Which bullet grain weight and which powder are going to go together and what, which powders and bullets are gonna be suited for the particular cartridge? Of interest here. So this is a high level chart and I'll just note that if you're subscribed to our newsletter we're going to provide resources in the newsletter like a downloadable PDF that you can print out as a reference for this stuff. So make sure that you're signed up there ultimatereloader.com slash subscribe. So what we notice straight away here is pretty interesting. The purple here is the 338 arc. All faster powders than the 22 and the 6. Uh, that makes sense because you know we've got a subsonic optimized cartridge here and typically that's where those powders are going to fall. The blue is for 6 arc and the green is for 22 arc and what's really interesting here to note and maybe this makes sense because those those calibers are similar in diameter they're not too far apart is that we've got a lot of overlapping powders in other words powders that we could use for either 22 arc or 6 arc. So let's take a more detailed look, starting with 22 arc at where these powders fall on the burn rate chart first here. And so the legend I have for all of these burn rate uh, chart diagrams is yellow would be for lighter bullets in the range for, for this particular cartridge. Blue is for heavier bullets. And then green could be used for light or heavy bullets. And what's interesting here is, yes, we have faster powders, uh, starting with ramshot, exterminator, and that, that first section ending, ending at an accurate 4064, for instance, right? All of those are kind of like light only. But then as we move down, most of the powders we could use for light bullets or for heavy bullets, the green areas, and we have none that are exclusive to, to heavy bullets. So kind of an interesting breakdown. And you can see the two sections of the burn rate chart. We start at position number 92. And as we go up in number, we go slower. As we go down in number on the burn rate chart, we go faster. So it starts from fast and ends at slow. You know, we have some of the, the classic powders like Varget are going to be in here, Stayball Match. Uh, we've loaded 22 arc with Stayball Match and shown that here on the channel. Uh, CFE 223 is a powder that we use quite a bit. Lever Revolution. H380, that's a popular 22250 powder. Makes sense that it's going to work in the 22 arc. Winchester 760, that's a, a nice metering ball powder. Even H4350, accurate 4350. A lot of these really familiar powders. Winchester Stayball 65, that's a great metering ball powder as well. So quite a few options and quite a few choices here for 22 arc. Now, if we look at performance, I have this broken down sort of a lighter bullet and a heavier bullet. So in the 55 grain range, we're going to be topping out in the 34 hundreds of feet per second here. Uh, so really good performance for, for varmiting. And as we go to the heavier bullets, more towards that longer range shooting kind of scenario, we're going to be pretty much bumping up against the classic 6.5 Creedmoor velocity of 2700. See a lot of upper 2600s here and and that's at a pressure where you know depending on your comfort level low development might get you up to that 2700 number especially with a, a longer barrel so definitely a wide range of different performance scenarios here lighter faster bullets for that varmiting scenario where you want that explosive bullet 
expansion and explosive uh, terminal performance. And then slower velocities, but really, really good long range performance like that four consecutive shot 1390 yard string that we showed here with a, a bolt gun using 22 arc. And what I love about the 22 arc is how gentle it is. In other words, if you really wanna focus on the trace, focus on your hits and your misses on target, you're gonna be able to see that really well with the 22 arc. It's not gonna beat you up. It's gonna be friendly for kind of newcomers. It falls somewhere in between the rim fire and traditional center fire shooting scenario. So I'm a big fan of the 22 arc. Moving on to six arc, similar burn rate overlap here actually because we're starting at h332 which is position number 85 we're going up to position number 139 which is super performance you can see right there stay ball 65 for heavy bullets we saw that also with the the 22 arc so that's a powder that we could use for both and uh, this breakdown however does look a little bit different you know our our faster powders cover those those lighter bullets they don't really extend that far down uh, and then we have some that are for heavy only. Kind of a patch in the middle here that's either light or heavy bullets, and then just all of the slower powders from H380 down to Hodgdon Superformance that have been selected by Hodgdon and, and that we have data for are gonna be for heavy bullets only. But still, if you look at the number of powders that are represented here, there's quite a bit of selection and lots of different options. So hopefully you'll have something on your shelves already in your reloading room that's gonna work. For the light and the heavy bullet ranges here, we selected 58 grain and 110 grain. And again, this was from data that we got directly from Hodgdon. And in that lighter bullet weight range, you're still gonna be up around 3,500, 34, high 34s to low 3,500s, which is really fast, that's gonna be really, really good performance. So I said 22 arc was geared towards varminting. This is gonna just do just about as good because that's gonna give you some really explosive performance with those 58 grain bullets, for, for instance. Stepping up to 110 grain bullets, we're down in the mid 2000s, right? It looks like we're almost up to 2700, 2656 for accurate 2520, for instance. Lot of powders here that you can choose from in that heavier bullet weight range for the six arc. We've used a few of these and they've all worked really well. Okay, stepping up to 338 arc, this looks really different. We have a very compact area on the burn rate chart here between position number 65, Hodgson Little Gun, and position number 80, which would be H4198. And here we have, <laughs> We have light and heavy bullets, and we have heavy bullets, right? So the heavy bullets are gonna be best for those subsonic loads. And I should note on the Hodgson website, if you go to the reloading data center, they have three sections. They have kind of standard loads, subsonic loads, and they have reduced loads. We have another video on the reduced loads that you're gonna to wanna to check out. Really interesting capabilities there to fine tune different aspects of your shooting experience and performance with those. If you go to that subsonic data, you're gonna have a great selection here with 338 ARC, and we're gonna see some of these same usual suspects that we might even use for something like 300 blackout. H110, traditionally a magnum pistol powder, right? But works great for subsonic 300 blackout. We see that represented here for 338 as well. Winchester 296, uh, we've got uh, CFE BLK, that's another one that we've used a ton uh, for the 300 blackout scenario. And that's gonna work for both heavy and light bullets here. So we haven't actually loaded for 338 arc here at Ultimate Reloader yet because we don't have the components yet. But I'm super curious to do some loading and to look at both subsonic and supersonic loads here. So let's look at some of the data that we got from Hodgdon. And this is great preparation for me loading the 338 arc. On the lighter side, you're gonna be in that somewhere around 150 to 175, and that's gonna get you supersonic, right? So you're, you're up at about 2,000 feet per second. In the 300 to 307 grain range, you're gonna be, all these velocities look very similar, right? Because we wanna get close to transonic, but we wanna have a little bit of overhead there, a little bit of headroom. So we wanna be right around 1050, and you can see a lot of the data shows velocities and again these are max loads that i've shown all of these and don't don't use this load data without double checking 
multiple other sources just to make sure that you're being safe. This is for reference only. You know, we've 1040, 1055, 1059, 1069, we're, we're right under 1100 feet per second. And that should work well in a variety of conditions and give you that reliable subsonic performance that you want with a suppressed rifle that is geared towards subsonic loads like the 300 Blackout or the 338 Arc. So again, this is a new cartridge this year and already we have quite a few options here. Okay, so that was a lot of data. And for us, this is a work in progress. As I mentioned, you know, we've done a bunch of loading for 22 ARC and 6 ARC, but 338 ARC is gonna be kind of the next direction that we go with that cartridge. We have two Odinworks AR-15s here, 338 ARC and a 22 ARC, and they both work awesome. They both look awesome. I love the green on this one. <laughs> so we're looking forward to doing more with this. Um, in conclusion, the 22 ARC and the 6 ARC are very similar, uh, similar powder selection, uh, similar loads, similar capabilities, especially if you take the 6 ARC and you go to the lighter bullet weight range, right? And then also the 22 ARC is no slouch for long range work because you can go up to those 90, 95 grain bullets, something like that, right? And that's gonna give you the BC that you need to carry those distances. 338 ARC, definitely different in its applications. Uh, but it does share the 2.260 inch cartridge overall length and the case rim diameter, which is the same as 762 by 39, same as 6.5 Grendel. And there are many powder options for all our cartridges. Like I mentioned, you're gonna to wanna to go to ultimatereloader.com slash subscribe. We're gonna be uh, providing more detailed uh, free resources in the newsletter that you can download, print out, put by your loading bench. These are really helpful resources if you're just coming into this loading for the arcs scenario and wanting to pinpoint what bolt weights am I gonna use, what powders am I gonna use. Also, 22 arc and six arc make great bolt action platforms. Really, trust me on this one. They are absolutely awesome. And I think 338 arc would be fun in a bolt action as well. And we just might do a belt. So here's what I wanna know from you is, do you wanna see that 338 arc bolt build? Let us know in the comments. Have you been loading for the 22 arc or the six arc or the 338 arc? Do you have experiences that you wanna share? Again, drop a comment and we'll join you there in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching this video. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching Ultimate Reloader on TV and wanna take advantage of free resources, exclusives, and hot deals, just hold your camera phone up to the QR code, tap on the link, fill out the information, boom, you're getting Ultimate Reloader emails. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. Thanks again for watching.